everyone, and welcome back. So today, we're going to be reviewing Jade Order on the Nintendo Switch. Now, the best way, in my opinion, to describe Jade Order would be a puzzle game, and it just released on May 27th of 2022, and it currently sells on the Nintendo Switch eShop for $6.99. Now, the game was published by Tortuga Zell, and it has a download size of 271 megabytes. So does this puzzle game offer enough originality to pull you in for its 50 levels? We'll be answering that in today's review. Just remember that if you are liking the content, one of the best ways to help support the channel is just to hit that like button. So for the storyline, there's actually quite a bit of exposition at the beginning of the game. You are explained that there is a war going on between the gods that has dropped a plague upon the world. As the chosen warrior of the Jade Order, it's your job to light the different beacons and empower the goddess so that she can lift the plague. Now, puzzle games rarely get a storyline behind them, so I was actually pretty excited when I was introduced to this setup. The one disappointing thing, however, is that you get no other storyline elements till you actually reach the end of the game. Now, given that they did take the time to create a backstory here, and that they separated the game levels into five different arcs, it would have been fitting to get a little bit of progression in the storyline at the beginning of each arc. Like maybe a one-screen cutscene explaining the progression of the fight against the God of Death. It's not a huge problem with the game, it just feels like a slight missed opportunity. So now if we move on to the gameplay. Now as I said earlier, the best way to look at Jade Order is as a puzzle game. Because even though by its animations it does feel like there's an action aspect to it, its overall gameplay will really cater to people who enjoy puzzle games. Now the basic gameplay breaks down to each level being separated into different points your hero can move to. Your primary goal is to eliminate a certain number of enemies to activate the exit portal to the level, and then make your way to that exit point progressing you to the next level. Now, defeating an enemy is done by moving to their position from either the sides or the back. Unfortunately, if you come into collision with an enemy from the front, they will rather defeat you. Now, at the beginning of the game, the enemies will be immobile and you just have to find the proper path to defeating them. But as you progress through the game, each enemy will start moving along the path in a certain pattern, even going so far as to shooting you with projectiles if you come into their line of sight. Now, as you progress through the different arcs, you'll also acquire special abilities, such as the ability to manipulate time and have an enemy move without you moving, freezing an enemy for a couple of turns and being able to attack them from the front, or even eliminate any enemy on the map. Now, these abilities come at the cost of what are called sparks that you have to collect on each level. Some will even drop from enemies that are highlighted in green. Now these abilities are used to add a level of complexity to the puzzles. And mastering these special abilities will be required to finishing the game. Now although these seem like action elements, what keeps this a puzzle game is it all works on a turn-based system. You make a move, your enemies make a move. And everything is about discovering the pattern to each level. Now to extend the gameplay, each level also has two sub-objectives. First, there's a golden chest that will always be placed in a pretty challenging area to reach. And secondly, there's a move counter at the top right, challenging you to complete the level in under a certain number of steps. Now the interesting part here is that these two objectives can rarely be completed in one playthrough, meaning that someone going for 100% completion is definitely going to have to play each level at least twice. Now the overall gameplay length will vary a lot based on your ability to solve the puzzles. On my end, I only got hung up on about two or three levels and I managed to complete the game in between two to three hours of gameplay. But I didn't go back to play those levels a second time to reach the 100% completion. And due to the fact that that will actually add an extra level of challenge, I would easily say that someone looking for 100% completion here will have more than six hours of gameplay. Now overall, I really do find that this gameplay loop adds a nice little twist to the often bland puzzle genre. Now if we move on to the controls. Now the controls to this game are extremely simple. You highlight an area of the map using either the D-pad or the left joystick, and then you press A to have your hero move to that space. Once you acquire your special abilities, X will open up the menu to access them, and once again, you'll then activate it with the A button. So overall, this game is only controlled with the D-pad and two buttons. The only added extra function button you need is actually the L button, which is like a rewind function. Hitting it will rewind you one move, making it very easy to correct your mistakes. And this simple control scheme works very well for the game. The one really nice touch here, however, is that in handheld mode, you can actually play with the touchscreen. And although both methods of play ended up working very well, I would say that the best way to play this one is with that touchscreen. 
and that's a pretty rare occurrence for the Switch. The only slight issue I did come across is a few times when I was using the controller, I did feel like I had to push a direction button twice for it to really input. But given that this is a puzzle game and it's not based on quick reaction times, it really didn't affect my overall experience. Now if we move on to the graphics and sound. Now visually, they went for a retro pixel art style. And I really did enjoy that they went for a style that you could actually think was an action game rather than a puzzle game. The design on the enemies were also very interesting and really fitting with their abilities. Now the basic color scheme that they did choose for the game is actually very nice. However, I would have liked to see a little bit of variation throughout the different arcs of the game. Because although they introduce enemies with different designs, the basic level design itself remains the same throughout the 50 levels. Now don't get me wrong, they will change the shape of the grid, but the overall basic visual design remains pretty much the same. A more apparent change of color scheme or themes would have been appreciated to really help and keep you interested visually in the game. Now sound design wise, once again, the soundtrack is okay. You can tell that it's mostly intended as background noise and not really supposed to take the forefront at any point. And I would say it pretty much does that job pretty well. It's just not a standout soundtrack. On the upside, the sound effects themselves when you defeat an enemy, when you use an ability are very fitting for the overall gameplay. Now we get to the verdict, and if this is one of the first reviews of mine you're watching, my full review scale is available in the description of the video. And in the case of Jade Order on the Nintendo Switch, I'm going to be giving this game a 7.5, putting it at the high end of a good game. Now as I said a couple of times throughout the review, this game does a lot to spice up the sometimes bland puzzle genre. The gameplay is easy to understand and does become addictive, really pushing you to make your way through the game. And the addition of new enemies and abilities as you make your way through really does keep everything feeling fresh till the end. Where the game does drop the ball a little bit is at the beginning it gives you a nice storyline setup, but then it's radio silence till the end of the game. And also, although the basic visual presentation is very well chosen, a little bit of variation would have been appreciated to keep things visually interesting till the end. But overall, at a budget price point, I do think this is a very solid offering if you're a fan of puzzle games. Just don't get tricked by the visuals into thinking this is an action game, you'll be disappointed. So now it's all up to you. Let me know in the comments down below if you agree with my review, are you going to pick up Jade Order or not? And don't forget on the way out that if you did like the content, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and click the notification bell so you know when all my future content comes out. And as usual, I hope I'll see you in my next video.